Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on just DC TV stuff and the Arrowverse in general because we've got some uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth stuff to uh, talk about. Now, when we started experiencing and just taking in the Arrowverse back in 2012 when Arrow started, we just thought we were like, you know, chilling, sitting back and watching a grounded vigilante show, which, you know, back then was the case. But back then, I don't think any of us thought we would be at the point, what, like seven years later where we would be getting, you know, ready to experience a multiverse epic event like Crisis on Infinite Earths. You know, starting from a single Earth in Season 1 of Arrow, and then like opening and broadening our, our views and minds into the multiverse in Season 2 of The Flash, and then bringing uh, in the likes of Supergirl and just more exploration into the multiverse through th uh, further seasons of The Flash, the multiverse just seems like a normal thing now. Like, if there is any uh, like any multiversal character that comes into The Flash specifically, I guess, no one really bats an eye or gives a crap. It is now just like a regular occurrence. But all of that, you know, the multiverse that is, could potentially be coming to an end pretty damn soon. And many people are wondering what exactly happens when that goes down. Like who lives, who dies, what's remembered, what's forgotten, what should we expect, you know, post-crisis or after-crisis. Well, that is exactly what we're going to go over in today's video. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to leave all of your very various thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below because you'll probably want to do that when we get to the later parts of this video. I'm interested to see what you guys think about certain things. But yeah, of course, if you're going to enjoy the video as well and just want to show your support, if you want to drop a like on the video, that'd be awesome as well. So to start off, the thing that I think most of the non-comic crowd, if you want to call it, or at least the crowd not familiar with the Crisis story uh, in the comics are wondering about the event when it eventually rolls around is what happens if the multiverse is actually uh, decimated and just well, gone, and we are just left with one Earth. You could argue it's almost like rewinding it back to the early days of Arrow when the multiverse wasn't even a thing. And obviously, to start off with the obvious, we will have one Earth, but it won't, or at least shouldn't, be the same as what we have had before. It's not like every other Earth will be destroyed and it's just Earth-1 that's left, and they're the only survivor of Crisis. The Earth that should remain if everything happens the way we have set it up uh, will be a sort of like amalgamation of what we know. So a lot of stuff put together, but it's completely new, if that makes sense. So with this new amalgam type of Earth, it will have its own history, whether it's accurate to our history, which the Arrowverse is pretty accurate too, or something different in certain areas. Maybe like Jimi Hendrix was president of the United States or something back in the day, and that could be a major change in what was. Another example could be that aliens might exist. I mean, like Supergirl and Superman would, you know, most likely still be around, but, you know, the invasion crossover didn't happen. So the Kryptonians might be like Earth's only or first encounter with aliens, things like that. I'm sure most of you could think of a few more examples like that fairly easily. But the simple thing that was taken from the comics was that the things that were kept in the universe when the, after the crisis were the interesting things. So keep that in mind. But the important thing to note is that not all the characters from the multiverse will just be plucked and dumped onto this new Earth. There will be a single version of most characters. I, I would say each character we have known, but that most likely won't be the case. So I would just say most characters and their history will be a bit different. Some more than others. They could have a completely different uh, backstory, like certain characters, like Barry Allen might have only been the Flash for, what, two years rather than six or so, or whatever they're up, whatever they're up to, and Supergirl might have arrived on Earth before Superman. She wasn't trapped in the Phantom Zone, you know, different histories and backstories like that, but, you know, they sort of are the same, or they're, they're similar, I guess you could say, when we meet them in present day after Crisis, if that makes sense. But then there could be some characters that could have a pretty identical history to what we have witnessed throughout the Arrowverse over the years, but there might be like the tiniest alterations in regards to memories just due to the difference in history, but their timeline is pretty much the same outside of that. Now, I'm not going to ignore the obvious. With the characters we have in the Arrowverse, the way things are done in the comics are easier to execute than in live action, especially with characters and shows that have been around for multiple, multiple seasons. So with your main characters like Flash, Supergirl, and especially Batwoman, and I, and I say especially Batwoman, uh, Batwoman because her show will have only been around for like, what, eight or nine episodes before this possible change occurs. So with these characters, you would expect minimal to zero changes, but maybe throughout the Crisis event, they have like massive moments that sort of change them anyway, if that makes sense. But it doesn't erase any development they have had up to that point, whether that be recent or a while back. But this doesn't mean these characters should remember everything. 
just what's relevant to them, I guess, but most things should be new. Pretty much for those that are affected by the change, they essentially blink and everything has changed after, you know, the multiverse is gone, if that, you know, so it's, the multiverse was destroyed, they blinked and it was just this new reality and they don't remember anything from the past, they just remember the history of this new earth. So that would be an interesting, but also difficult thing for the people behind the crossover to execute well, if this is the way they go, as these characters have no co uh, recollection of what us, the audience, no one have seen, because it's completely new to them and that's all they have ever known. But yeah, as I alluded to there, some people do remember what came before, so we should expect some characters in the TV adaptation in the Arrowverse to be given that honor, if you want to call it, I guess. I guess the big question is whether they stay around on the shows, or maybe that in Crisis they were introduced and they are the only ones that in this new Earth that remember what was before, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Like, really, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if Flash and Supergirl, and I guess Batwoman as well, do remember what came before, but as I said, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this is where we jump into the most interesting part of the video, in my opinion, if you already sort of knew how Crisis worked, and that is who lives, who dies, what is remembered, and what is forgotten. And the easiest way to do this in the video, I guess, in my opinion at least, is just to go through each of the shows individually and decide what could be written off or kept. And so this video isn't 35 or 45 minutes long, you know, going over each tiny detail that could change in each show, we would just choose like one or two major things that could occur after Crisis in each show. So... Let's start with everyone's favorite show, Supergirl. Now with Supergirl, and this will be the same with most of the shows, don't expect the main characters to randomly just change. Like, um, you know, Alex Danvers to be completely different or something, or to not be in the show at all. They should just stay the same, but just with those changes in memories and the history and stuff, just to, you know, so they fit in this new earth. But what you could expect to change that is pretty major and that people won't be happy with, this is just a prediction by the way, but it wouldn't surprise me in the, in, in the slightest, is maybe some stuff with Superman as well as villains from the Superman rogues gallery. And, and by this, sorry, I mean, they could make it that maybe Superman is dead or has been gone for a while, or maybe he's just missing, or maybe he's the, or maybe he's like the newbie of the family on earth rather than the Supergirl as I was saying before, maybe Supergirl arrived on earth before Superman. Now, this would allow them to use some of the Superman villains as main threats, like they did with Lex Luthor last season. I'm not saying this is what I want to happen, but it's something I could definitely see happen uh, happening. Like, the Supergirl show, especially early on at least, tried to knock down Superman to praise Supergirl, which is unnecessary, especially if you do read the comics. Both characters are good characters um, with their advantages over each other, so hopefully they don't pull that. But it's something that I could see happening, unfortunately, but I have to wait and see. Now, just to quickly squeeze this in here now, just to get it out of the way, and that's Batwoman. And the reason I'm squeezing this in here quickly is, well, it's pretty obvious. Batwoman will just have just started, you know, before Crisis. There won't be too much to do in regards to changes from what we know from their show. So, yeah, I can't really think of anything else to put here. The only thing I can think of, like, from the top of my head is... Um, you know, maybe bringing some of the Gotham and Batman based villains that Arrow used in its early seasons, we could see them come back, but changed up. So it's either maybe the same actor, but with a different, you know, history or someone completely different, like a young girl or a gender bent version or something like that. So Crisis could, you know, technically widen Batwoman's villain list possibly by changing, you know, what Arrow used in the past. Next up, we have The Flash. Now, this is probably one of the ones where there could be a plethora of changes because the showrunner has stated that The Flash this season will revolve around Crisis like it's going to be a crisis sandwich the first half of the season will have its own arc that will eventually build up to the crisis event in the middle of the season and then after that event the show will be dealing with the aftermath of crisis and that will be the arc until the end of the season with another villain to go with that as well so there is a chance that crisis could change something up with a character from the past on the show and with this new reality if you want to call it that we are in they could go ahead and make them the villain if they wanted to you know eddie thorne could play into it for example any character that was like defeated or just used in a pretty crap way could be reinvented in the new earth. Uh, Godspeed, for example, maybe a new Hunter Zolomon, stuff like that. Sure, we don't want them to just reuse stuff from previous seasons, but a lot could be taken advantage of with this. But yeah, a lot of the stuff with the rogues from the past could be changed from what we know. I think that'd be a good way to go. And even characters like Julian Albert and stuff like that could be brought back. Um, Flash probably has the most potential in regards to changes that would be for the best. So yeah, I'm interested to see what they could do. Now, next up is Legends of Tomorrow, and they are the hardest ones to even guess what could happen with them because Legends tends to exist in like a different timeline and just area 
all the time outside of the cross servers. Like season five of Legends will involve evil serial killers and dictators from the past being brought back to life from hell. Weird. And of course, they time travel as well. So with Legends, the thing that could be brought into effect that has something to do with them is maybe characters that have been a part of the team or, they've, or that they've like faced in the past being reinvigorated or brought back to life. Something like that. I really have no idea when it, when it comes to them, to be completely honest. It's almost like a mixed bag. Now, second last, we have Black Lightning. Now, a few months ago, we didn't think Black Lightning would even be involved in Crisis due to the, well, almost like protest level blockage that their showrunner held on the characters of the show for like not crossing over with the Arrowverse. But as we found out about like, what, a month or so ago, the characters from Black Lightning will be involved in Crisis and in turn be affected by what happens in it. Now, I'm not expecting any major changes to what has happened on their show, but the, you know, but the big change will be... Well, they should be on the same earth as the other heroes, which, you know, which could affect how they tell their stories, I guess. Um, but it is, of course, completely up in the air what happens there. But if this happens, it, you know, could blow the door off the hinges in regards to the possibilities that they now have for not only their show, but also future crossovers and all that. So, yeah, but Black Lightning's not too sure what they're going to do with that going forward. And finally, we have Arrow, and you might be thinking, hold on, page you mate, Arrow is ending two episodes after Crisis. Does it really need its own section on all of this? And yeah, I think it does. Like, who knows what Crisis does to the legacy of the characters on Arrow, and in particular, obviously, the, the Green Arrow. And I'm not insinuating that the changes would be or could be negative. We could see something post-crisis in this potential new existence, if you want to call it, They like that almost leaves the legacy of the Green Arrow and everyone involved in a brighter light, if that makes sense. Maybe Star City wasn't shitting on Green Arrow in the past, or at least to the extent that it was that we saw, and certain characters could have different histories that connect to different corners of this new, of this new Earth and universe that allow them to continue on, you know, various things like that. As I've said, and as it applies to most of the shows in the Arrowverse, the changes to the past and just the general molding of everything into a potential soul Earth after Crisis would be massive for stuff going forward and also add another couple of years to each show as it could be seen, as it was in the comics, as a sort of like soft reboot. Obviously, I don't think we're expecting it to be at the level of reboot that it was in the comics, more of a soft reboot on the show, but with a refresh of uh, some of the shows while closing the door on others, as well as potentially opening the door on others, um, you know, what happens in Crisis could be massive going forward and its effect could be ongoing and not just be an awesome event that we get to watch, you know, come December and early 2020. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it show support. Uh, leave all of your various opinions in the comment section down below and different, uh, you know, options I guess you have for each uh, show and who could be changed and who could be gone and who could stay around and stuff like that. And um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.